Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 156, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, and happy uh, Friday to you too, Rich. Um, uh, we have another fantastic tip today. Uh, Mara, I really like um, this, this new feature of background processes. When you create a process in Apex, you can kick it off to run in the background. Um, it's something that we've been able to do for a long time ourselves if we wanted to deal with DBMS scheduler job, but it was tricky because you, you didn't always have access to bind variables and, and all these kinds of things. Whereas when you use the Apex background process that Oracle provides, it's all just built right in, to, in for you and, and, and it's super easy to use. You, you can have multiple processes in a background process. They handle all the queuing. It's just so, so easy. Um, so yes. today we're, our tip is about that, but we've added in a little trick as well or a little, a little annoyance that we've come up with. Um, yes. So <laughs> let's see our example that we have here. So I've created a page with two background processes. Each one is run by clicking on one of these two buttons. And so if I click the first yeah, so button. Hang on just a second. We haven't shared your screen, but um, somebody commented on our changed intro. Um, what do you think uh, about the changed intro? Uh, um, I, I like it, uh, but uh, I, we should get, we get our feedback. Um, but I'm going to kick off our timer as well. The, the timer's not showing on your screen, Marwa, but I'm going to kick it off on my side. We've got five minutes and five minutes only. Uh, let's see what we get. Okay, so background processes. So we have two background processes on this page, one to send anniversary gifts and the second one to, to give raises. If we take a look at um, those background process, so it's, um, the first one is give raises and the type is execution chain and we have our PLSQL code here. So um, we are uh, setting the progress of this process and setting some status message. Right, okay. so lines four, line four gives us a, a status message while the process is running, and line seven sets the process along. We have 10 steps, so we're able to see how many steps it is. Let's take a look and see what kind of results we get from this. Yes, so I've created a different page to display the results, and we have different so we can see background, you this background a few processes. Times in the past. Like Yes, so those process has finished, has already finished, and we can see some status message. You can notice that these messages are different. Right, the, the, the anniversary gifts another, tell us so. how many were given, but the, uh, the give raises doesn't tell us how many were given. Exactly. But I, yes. But I thought you did that. I thought in your code you set how many you were doing. I actually did. So this is the procedure to set the status message while the process is running, is executing. But once the process is finished, the status message gets the value of this success message. Oh, so it overwrites it. Exactly. Oh, well, well, let's run it. Let's see how it works. Let's see what it looks like when it's running. So I will run both processes. The first one, and this is the Second one, let's go to see the results. So, right. So we this, these the are the two new processes. <clears throat> right. Okay, so I get it. I get it's doing it as it goes. And I understand how you got raises given because raises given is hard coded. It's the success message. But the anniversary gifts, somehow you've figured out a way to not just get the hard-coded value, right? Because right here, it's success, but it says it's been given. Exactly. It keeps the last message that I've said through the PL SQL code. And the way it's because I, I created a page item and I'm setting the, the message inside that page item. And then I reference that page item in the success message attribute of the process itself. Oh, using the ampersand dot syntax. Interesting. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I get it. All right. 
So now I understand how you kept it there. Great. All right. So I think, uh, I think that is a great little tip. So if we want to fix a lot, the, the give raises and, and fix that one, how do we do that? What's going to be our trick? So we are already setting the page item with the correct value. I'm going to put that page item in the success message here instead of this static words like oh, this. Okay. Excellent. There now, if we do both processes again, we will see that the last status message is kept. Ah, so the that's process. great. Well, while this is running, because it's going to take us 20 seconds or so, while this is running, let's take a look at this page. Can you edit this page? Show, show folks the query that you're using. Yes, so we have the interactive report here that is displaying all information about the background processes that are running. We are using this view and we can get the status, status message and all of these information. Um, all right, and I see line seven is the status message and line 12, you used a, a procedure. What's what's that procedure about or a function, I guess? I, I, it's re, it will return the same value of the status message. You can okay. use it in different um, in other procedures or functions that you would like to create. Well, excellent. So I think that view is the key. Uh, yes, and if if you notice, there have been some refreshing happening on the page. Uh, oh yes. And this is because I've added a dynamic action plugin from our toolkits which is the timer one to run refresh of the report. And I guess that's our five minutes. My timer just went off. Um, so, uh, so no more, uh, no more of our, our shameless plug for our timer, but, uh, but the timer does make it easy to, uh, to refresh the report every few seconds. Um, uh, there we go. Um, there's our shameless in, in some plug for a plugin. Um, uh, is there any possibility to share the demo app of all tips you are doing? That's a great question. You know what? I, my, my intention is to write a short blog post uh, about each of these and then to include the demo apps. So we'll do that. Um, we'll, uh, you know, there, there are some, there are some things that we can't share because like this timer, for example, we don't just give it away. Um, but if you want the timer, you can reach out to, to somebody at Insum. But but as far as most of it goes, yeah, we can we can make these things available. I'll start doing a better job of uh, of doing blog posts on these. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is a great little example of uh, an Apex Instant trick, right? Trick, because, right? Yeah, yeah. This uh, yeah, by by using by getting around this hard coded value, you can you can do that. Um, well, that's great. Um, Anything else, Marwa? I didn't prepare any kind of wisdom of the week or joke or, or anything. Um, me neither, but like um, for the timer plugin, you can replace that by adding a refresh button on the re on your report, maybe right. to fire a refresh action on that region. Yes, but I do like the implementation that you had of just you know a, a single report that shows all of your background processes. I thought that was great. Um, well, I guess that is it for this week. Um, you've wasted a per perfectly good nine minutes. Wow, this was quick. Uh, that's excellent. Yes. Um, I've wasted a perfectly good nine minutes of your Friday with us, and uh, we'll plan to see you next week. If you liked this episode, like it, uh, do all those things, subscribe, etc. cetera. Um, tell your mom about the show. See you soon, Marwa. See you, bye.